Hey, welcome. Today we are going to walk through uh, PowerPoint Chapter 3. Scroll down here, find uh, PowerPoint Chapter 3 Greater Project. Go ahead and click on that. We're going to come over and download materials. For this particular assignment, we're going to need uh, instructions, uh, our student file, our video file, and our background. Remember, do not click this download all files button as it uh, saves in a weird place and does not allow for easy uploading and saving. Uh, once we've downloaded all files, go ahead and open up your student file. Click on enable editing and we are done with step one and ready to move to step number two. All right, step number two, it says change the colors for the presentation to blue warm we are going to go to the design tab under the design tab we are going to find where it says variants we are going to click the down uh, down arrow next to variants uh, the more button here we're going to go to change our colors hover over colors and we're going to find where it says blue warm it looks like it is the fourth color down and we are done with step number two. All right, for step number three, it says on slide one, we want to format the background with water droplets texture and change the transparency to 50%. Well, from our slide selector over here on the left-hand side, let's go ahead and click on our first slide, which is this Visit Pacifica Bay. We are going to come up here to our Design tab. Under our Design tab, we are going to come where it says a Customize Format Background. Let's click on Format Background. We are looking for a texture fill. So let's uh, put a dot next to Picture or Texture Fill. We are going to scroll down here to where it says Texture. We're going to click the down arrow with this uh, texture icon right here. And we are going to find Water Droplets. If we hover over it right here, it says Water Droplets. Go ahead and select this background. And we are going to change our transparency to 50%. So let's go ahead and just click and highlight on this 0% and type in 50 and hit enter. And notice now uh, it has a transparency of about 50% and we have water droplets on our first slide. For step number four, it says select slides two through four. So let's go ahead and click on slide number two from our slide selector on the right, uh, left hand side. Hold down your shift key. Hold down the shift key and select slide number four. And when you uh, click on slide two, hold down shift key and select four, it will highlight two, three, and four. And it says we want to apply a solid fill to the background. Uh, once again, I still have my format background open. However, if you closed it, you can come back up here to Format Background. So under Format Background, we want to do a solid fill. So make sure your dots next to Solid Fill. And we want to uh, change it to the second to the last column, the third color. Uh, it says Teal Accent 5 Lighter 60%. So right here, let's click on this paint can spilling over our color icon. And we want to find where it says Teal Accent 5. And uh, go ahead and go down 3 to where it says Teal <laughs> Accent 5 Lighter 60%. And click on that. And notice now slides 2 through 4 have a teal background. Now moving on, step number 5 says on slide 2, hide the background graphics. So now let's go ahead and just click on slide number 2 on our slide selector on the left hand side. And notice that we have this blue bar going down the right hand side. We want to hide that graphic. To do that, let's go ahead and come back over here to our format background sidebar and put a check mark next to hide background graphics. And notice when you put a check mark there, it will disappear. On sl uh, step number six, it says on slide number two, we are going to insert a table with three columns and four rows. So let's make sure we are on slide number two, which we should still be. And notice that under this uh, 
context bar here, we have these three or these six different icons. This first icon is an insert table icon. Go ahead and click on this insert table icon right here. And it's going to ask us how many columns, how many rows. In this particular case, we want three columns, four rows. So let's change this to three columns. And let's change the number of rows to four. And go ahead and hit OK. And notice that it will put a table into our document for us. And we want to type in the information uh, in step number six. So in this first box here, we're going to type in trip type. You can hit the tab key and type in day one. Hit the tab key. Hit uh, type in day two. Hit the tab key. And we're going to do Adventure Seeker. And we're going to hit the tab key again. Uh, we're going to type in kayak and snorkel. Make sure you get your spelling correctly. Hit the tab key. We're going to type in nature preserve hike. Hit the tab key again. It's going to take us down to the next line, family friendly. Hit the tab key, Pacifica Bay Zoo. Tab key again, beach, day, and horseback riding. Tab key again, arts and culture. Make sure you use the and uh, sign the number seven button. Tab key, Pacifica Bay Art Museum. And tab key and artisan walk. Before we move on, make sure you double check all of your typing. Make sure you've spelled everything correctly. Make sure you use the right punctuation uh, and also make sure you use the right case. Uh, make sure you capitalize what needs to be capitalized. All right, so once you've typed in all of your information here, we need to change our table style. So let's come up here to our table tools design tab and let's select table style medium style three so let's come up here to our table styles let's click the down arrow with the line above it that says more and under medium let's find style three accent three right here medium style three accent three it looks like it is the third row down fourth column over go ahead and select that and now we are done with number six all right, step number seven, it wants us to resize uh, the table so that the lower edge extends to three inches on the lower half of the vertical ruler. We'll make sure that we come up here to our view tab. Under our view tab, make sure you put a check mark next to the ruler if it is not already there. So we can see our ruler on the top and on the side. Now it says we want to take the lower edge and extend it to the three inches on the lower half so we want to extend it down to right here so let's go ahead and come and grab this middle dot right here notice when you hover over the dot you get two uh, arrows pointing away from each other go ahead and click hold and drag that all the way down to the three inch mark uh, on that vertical ruler and let go And then it wants us to distribute the tables, uh, the row tables. All right, so we want to come to our table tools layout tab. Under cell size here, we want to do uh, distribute rows. And that is going to make all the rows the exact same uh, height. And 
And then it wants us to align the text uh, table text so that it is centered uh, horizontally and vertically within the cells. So let's go ahead and come up here to our alignment grouping. Let's go ahead and click on the center button here. And let's click on the center vertically button here. And that will center our text horizontally and vertically uh, within the cells. And we are done with step number seven. Uh, step number eight, it wants us to change the uh, font size of the first row of our table to 24. So let's come up here and let's highlight trip type, day one, and day two. Let's highlight all three of these cells right here. Once you've highlighted those three cells, let's come to the Home tab. Under the Home tab, where it says Font Grouping, we are going to change the font size to 24. It also wants us to apply a circle style cell bevel. We're going to go back to the Table Tools Design tab. We're going to go to our table styles, click on effects, cell bevel, and let's find the one that says uh, circle bevel. Uh, in this particular case, mine is going to be round. Round and circle are the same. Uh, so if yours has round, select round. If your version has uh, circle, select circle. I'm going to go ahead and as apply a round bevel uh, to my uh, first row. And we are done with step number eight. All right, moving on. Step number nine. It, go, it says on slide three. So let's go to our slide selector. Let's click on slide three. Under slide three, it wants us to animate the picture. We're going to click on this picture right here. And we are going to come up to our Animations tab. Under our Animations tab, we want to select the Wipe Entrance effect. We're going to come to our down arrow with the line above it. Under Entrance Effects, we are going to find the Wipe Entrance effect. Here it is, Wipe Entrance effect. And it'll give us a little preview of what it's going to do uh, when, we, uh, when we come to this slide in our PowerPoint presentation. Uh, it also wants us to change the uh, starting uh, effect starting after previous. Let's come over here to our timing grouping right here where it says start on click. Let's change that to after previous. It also wants us to change the duration to one second. So where it says duration 0.5, let's change this to one. So let's I delete the, uh, so we're gonna do 0.01.00. 0, 1. We are going to apply the split entrance effect to the bulleted list. Click on the bulleted list right here. And we are going to do the split entrance effect right here is split. If you don't see it on this uh, bar here, you can click on the down arrow with the line above it under the entrance. It's split right here. Give us a quick preview. But we want to change it. Uh, to the effect options to vertical out. So we're going to come up here to our effect options and we are going to change it to vertical out. And there's our nice little preview of what will happen when we move to this slide. And we are done with step number nine. All right, step number 10. We want to go to slide number four. So let's go ahead and click on slide four on our slide selector on the left hand side. And it wants us to insert a clustered column chart. We're going to come over here to our uh, placeholder 
And notice that the second icon is insert chart. Click on insert chart, a clustered column chart. It shows up the very first one for us. Click on uh, clustered column chart and hit OK. And once the chart comes in, notice how it opens up this chart in Microsoft PowerPoint. This is where we're going to put in all of our information. So it says in row one, beginning in cell B1, where it says series one. Let's go ahead and double click in this cell, delete series one, and type in 2017. Then hit the tab key. It's going to move us over to series two. And let's go ahead and put in 2018. Hit tab. Type in 2019. Hit tab again. Notice it takes us down to category one. We're going to type in spring. Tab. We're going to type in 75600. The tab key again. 72300. Notice as we hit tab, our uh, chart is starting to build itself right in front of us. We're going to type in 81460. Hit the tab key again. Now we are going to type in summer. Hit tab. We're going to do 105300. Tab key. 12. Eight seven three zero tab key one four three six zero zero hit the tab key again it's going to take us down to category three we're going to type in fall tab key three five nine zero zero hit tab five eight three zero zero hit tab, and then 58320. Once again, get used to using those uh, tab keys. It makes navigating a little quicker. Hit tab again, and it's going to take us to category four. And then in category four, we are going to type in winter. Hit the tab key, 41600, tab, 58 four three zero hit tab and then six seven three zero zero and hit tab again and we are done this is it we do not want to put anything else in here uh, I hit the tab key by accident I shouldn't have uh, it added an extra space here in order to get rid of this extra space Come up here to this uh, little icon uh, under row six. Notice when you hover over this uh, little icon right here, it has two arrows pointing away from each other. Click, hold, and drag that up uh, to five, and it will get rid of that space for us. And now our chart is complete. We should have spring, summer, fall, and winter. And then click on this X right here to get out of our chart in Microsoft PowerPoint. And we are done with step number 10. Step number 11, it wants us to apply a chart style eight to the chart. So our chart is selected. We're gonna come up here to our chart tools design tab. And here are our chart styles. We wanna select chart style number eight, uh, which for me, it's showing right here. It's under the, uh, the chart styles. It's style eight with the black background. Uh, if it's not there for you, Click on this down arrow with the line above it where it says more and then select style number eight. And it wants us to remove the chart title element. So let's come down to our chart title. Notice how we have on the right hand side it says the, it has this plus button here that says chart elements. Let's click on that and uncheck where it says chart title and it'll get rid of that chart title for us. 
and we want to apply a wipe entrance effect so we're going to come up here to our animations tab under our animations tab we want to select the wipe entrance effect and right here it is the wipe entrance effect notice how it does the entire uh, chart we want to change that so it does it by series so we're going to come over here to where it says effect options and we're going to come down to where it says sequence by series and when you click by series it will uh, transition it and it will bring each bar up uh, one at a time and we are done with step number 11 step number 12 it wants us to apply the style one background style to slide five so let's go ahead and click on slide five from our slide selector and it wants us to apply the style one background style we are going to come to our design tab we are going to come over here to our variants click the down arrow with the line above it where it says background styles don't click on anything we just want to hover over style number one just hover over it then right click on it and apply to selected slides meaning we're only going to apply it to slide number five so right click on it and apply to selected slides and it will only apply it to slide number five and from our downloaded greater files it wants us to insert the video to do that we're going to go to the insert tab under the insert tab we are going to all the way over here to media we're going to click the down arrow for video and video on my pc and it should be saved under the downloads folder so i'm going to click on downloads and here it is uh it is uh which video do we want we want o3g video which is this one right here we're going to click on that and hit insert and it will put the video in for us and we are done with step number 12. all right moving on step number 13. we want to change the video height to six to do that we're going to find our video tools under our video tools format tab we're going to change our height from four to six And we want to use the align center and align top. We're going to come to our range group right here. Click align. And we want to align center. And we want to click on align again and align top. And it's going to move it to the top for us. We also want to apply the soft edge effect uh, rectangle video style. So notice we have our video styles right here. We're going to click the down arrow with the line above it that says more. And it is going to be a uh, soft edge rectangle video style. Soft edge rectangle. Looks like it is the third one under subtle right here. And click on that. Notice how it has a nice fuzzy uh, border around it and we are done with step number 13 step number 14 on the playback tab we're going to come up here to our video tools we're going to click on our playback tab under our playback tab it wants us to change the video options to start automatically so right here where it says start in sequence click the down arrow and then click automatically we want to trim the video so that the end time is zero zero colon zero nine to do that we are going to trim video under editing and we can move this red bar here if we like or to make it easier we can come down here to our end time highlight that type in zero zero colon zero nine and it will trim it at the nine second mark for us and hit OK and lastly on this one it wants us to compress the media to low quality 
To do that, we're going to uh, come to the File tab. Under the File tab where it says Compress Media, we're going to click the down arrow. And it's not giving us uh, low quality. We're just going to click on Standard Quality. Uh, for me, it might say low quality for you, but I'm going to click on Standard Quality. And it's going to compress it for us. Once it's done compressing, go ahead and hit close. And click on our back arrow right here, and it will take us back to our presentation. And we are done with step number 14. Step number 15, it says on slide number 6, hide the background graphic. Well, I'm going to come down here to slide number uh, 6. I still have my format uh, tab open over here, slide bar open over here. I'm going to close out of that real quick. You don't have to. But for those of you who do not have it open, you can click on slide six. Go to our design tab. Under our design tab, under customize, click on format background to open up that sidebar. And on slide six, we want to hide our background graphic. So put a check mark next to hide background graphic. And then we want to format the uh, slide background by inserting the picture. Uh, that we downloaded. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to put a dot next to picture or texture fill. From insert picture from, we're going to click on file. We're going to navigate to our downloads folder because that's where it should be. And we want to find uh, the graphic that says PO3G background, uh, which is this one right here, the nice uh, uh, water picture. Click on that and hit insert. And there it is, there is a nice uh, beach uh, background. And it wants us to set the transparency to zero. So right now we have transparency set at 50. Let's highlight that 50, type in zero, hit enter. And that way it is no, no transparency. We can now see the full picture. And we are done with step number 15. Step number 16, we wanna insert a header footer on our notes and handout section. To do that, we are going to click on the Insert tab. Under the Insert tab, under the text grouping here, we're going to click on Header Footer. And we want to make sure we select Notes and Handouts. Under Notes and Handouts, we want to uh, put a check mark next to Date and Time. Uh, we want to make sure it's updated automatically. We want to put uh, a check mark next to page number. From page number, we want to add a footer. And under footer, we want to type in travel presentation. Once you're done typing uh, travel presentation, hit apply to all. And we are going to put a tab, document property. So let's go to our file tab here. Under tags, we're going to add a tag. We're going to type in travel, comma, space, tourism. And go ahead and save our document. And we are done with number 16. Step number 17, it wants us to view the slideshow from the beginning. To show, uh, look at the slideshow, we're going to come up here to the slideshow tab and we're going to click on from beginning. And for yours, uh, it'll look a little differently. I'm hooked up to a presentation, I'm hooked up to a projector. But just go through all the slides, uh, hit the space bar, hit the space bar. Notice how all of our animations. how they all come into the presentation to help you highlight what's important. Just keep hitting the tab, uh, the space bar. Every time you hit the space bar, it will bring us through the entire presentation. And there it is at the end of the slideshow. Go ahead and click to exit. And we are done. Let's go ahead and save our document. Once we're done saving our document, we can go ahead and close out of it. Come back to our assignment calendar here. 
this should already be open. I'm going to come down here and click on my icon. Here it is. I'm going to exit out of my download starting materials. Choose file. Under my downloads, I'm going to find uh, on my student file, this one right here, uh, chapter three. I'm going to open it, upload it, and submit for grading and close the assignment. I want to double check my work, see how I did. I'm going to scroll back down to my grader project. I'm going to click on the three dots, view submissions, and I got 100%. If you want to click and see your grade, you can click on this, see if you did anything wrong. Uh, if you did, you can go see exactly what you did wrong, go back, fix the file, and re-upload it for a better grade. Once again, if you need to contact me, contact me through uh, Canvas uh, via email, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to the channel, as I'll be posting new walkthroughs and tech tips each week. Check back regularly for new content, and have a wonderful day.